Hello YouTube and welcome to the Contrarian's Compass. I'm your host, JD3, and I'm broadcasting from beautiful Colorado. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about your disease, the disease of alcoholism and addiction, out in the parking lot doing push-ups like they like to talk about in meetings. And I, I just want to uh, unpack that a little bit and really think this through. So. You know, there's this commonly held belief in AA, and it's, it's commonly said, you know, while you're in here getting better, your disease is out in the parking lot doing push-ups. Um, and you know how it works is read it, in most all meetings, before the meetings, at least the ones that I'm aware of, um, and they talk about alcohol as cunning, baffling, and powerful. And so there's this idea in AA that the disease is basically waiting. It's waiting for its opportunity to strike. And if the recovering uh, addict or alcoholic lets down their guard in any way, shape, or form, the disease is going to pounce. It will trick them and it will get them to relapse. It is stronger than them. They can't say no to it. Because again, my, their old way of thinking got them to the point where they needed to come into AA, right? Now they have to surrender their way and adopt God's way instead, supposedly. So. They're totally powerless in this. So they either, you know, the, the big book talks about lack of power. That was our dilemma, right? And they find power by surrendering to God. So there's this whole idea with the disease that at any moment, the disease is going to pounce and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. It's a progressive disease, whether you're drinking or not, right? They talk about that. Whether you're drinking or not, it's progressive. It continues to get stronger, continues, continues, continues. And then if you pick back up, even after a long time, you'll be back to where you were and worse in no time. And that's a commonly, that's a commonly perpetuated belief. And uh, in, in my perspective, from my point of view, I think that's, it, it's complete and utter BS. It's fear mongering, it's a fear tactic. It's, it's giving a medical condition or a uh, physical condition uh, more power than it deserves. And it's also relinquishing one's responsibility, one's ability to choose, one's agency and ability to make changes in their lives, and leaving it all up in the air. Oh, I can't control it. The disease could trick me at any time and then I'd be screwed. So either I'm surrendered to God because I need God to guide me, or I'm surrendered to my disease. But there's no in-between. No in-between at all. I have no choice. I can't do anything to control it. Huh, it sounds a little bit too convenient to me. So what are my options? with that mentality. So my options are one, either be surrendered to the AA way for the rest of my life, or two, drink myself to death. Jails, institutions, and death. That's where the disease leads. It's given the disease way more credit and way more power than it deserves. It's also diminishing your own uh, ability to choose and your own agency. Uh, don't forget that the majority of people who get sober do so on their own. The majority do not go to AA. So AA is already a small fraction of people. AA likes to act like it's got the secret worldview perspective and that's the true answer and everyone outside of it's wrong. Huh, sound, does, that sound, does that sound a little bit strange? Does that sound a little bit culty to you? It sure sounds culty to me. But I don't know. Uh, you know, I drank that Kool-Aid. I believed that for a long time. I believed that, you know, any, any second the disease could pounce on me. And, but I finally got to the point where it's like, you know what? No, this is a, this is a medical problem. And, and, and like any other medical problem, I don't say, you know, like the, 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 the cold virus is out in the parking lot doing push-ups. No. So why am I given that type of power to uh, the supposed disease of alcoholism, alcohol abuse. Why am I giving it that power? Well, I think that the reason why people give it that power and the reason why that's perpetuated is because uh, at the core of AA is self-disempowerment and uh, acting as if we have no choice in our lives or what we do. So as long as I believe that the disease is some demonic force getting stronger and stronger, then my hands are free and clear of any responsibility of what happens. So whether I stay sober, great, you know, but for the grace of God, there, there go I. And if I relapse, well, I'm an out-of-control addict. The disease is too powerful for me. I can't do anything about it. That's uh, interesting. So it gets somebody out of being responsible for their actions. And, and, and what, what does responsibility for one's own actions entail? Well, it entails hard work. 
It entails saying, you know what? It's not God's fault. It's not my disease's fault. It's my fault. I chose. I decided to go drink instead of uh, take care of my responsibilities. It was too painful to take care of my responsibilities. I want to run and hide from them. But I'm going to act like I'm a powerless addict and say, oh, it's not my fault. It's my disease's fault. It's my cunning, baffling, powerful disease that tricked me. Yeah, okay. Well, that's real convenient. I'm here to offer that you do have a choice. You are responsible for your own decisions. This does not mean, this isn't, this isn't a loophole to go drink. If you're interpreting my message as, oh, it's dangerous, everyone's gonna go drink, you know what? That's your choice if you go drink. That's your choice. And you know what? You're never off the hook of being responsible. Wherever you go, there you are. So it's not, it's not God's fault, it's not the disease's fault, it's your fault if that's what you choose. And I'm not saying it's easy work to stay away from that stuff, I'm not saying that at all. You probably, you, you might need counseling, you might need to review your beliefs and your values and change a lot of things, change the people that you're around, whatever. That's true. Uh, you know, it's a big deal to walk away from uh, active addiction like that. But don't get it twisted. Your decisions and your responsibility absolutely have to do with, uh, you know, rec recovering from uh, active addiction. And it's not some invisible entity's job, and it's not some demonic force trying to trip you up. Why not question your own beliefs? If, if deep down inside you feel like the, the best life has to offer is, is getting loaded and getting drunk, I hate to break it to you, that's probably eventually going to happen again. If that's really what you believe, those are the things that need to be addressed and changed. You know, for me, for a long time, I thought um, I was absolutely incapable of facing emotional pain, and so I did everything in my ability to avoid feeling my feelings. That has nothing to do with God. That has nothing to do with the disease. That has to do with my own lack of self-awareness and my own lack of emotional growth. Maybe because I wasn't facing anything as I was growing up, so guess what? I never learned. And once I finally did, once I finally learned through uh, counseling and self-reflection and really thinking through this stuff, hey, I can feel my emotions. I can feel pain. I can work through it. And guess what? It's gotten better. And guess what? I don't need to worry about the disease doing push-ups in the parking lot anymore because it ain't there. And I don't need to be worried about, am I surrendered to God properly? Did I say my prayers right? Did I work my ninth step hard enough? Whatever it is, I don't have to worry about that either because guess what? I'm the one who decides how I live my life. I'm the one who decides what type of life I want to lead. I'm the one who makes decisions about my day. So that's my perspective on it. Um, What's your perspective on it? Please let me know down in the comments and um, join in on the discourse. Thanks for watching.